Hello everyone, Magdalena here, Wolf of Coins. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm finally doing what I promised to do, which is a flip through of the Budapest Tarot by uh, Tarot Sheet Revival, Sullivan Hismans. And yeah, I've, I finally have some time because I'm back from my holidays. And this is, yeah, I will just show you all the cards. There is a video, um, about first impressions of of mine and of Kasia from Tarot Map, uh, you can you can check out that video. Uh, it was like the unboxing in nature kind of thing, and it was very fun. Uh, but yeah, now you will be able to see all the cards. So uh, the cards came with this band. I cannot put it. Well, I could, but I won't. Be putting it back. Anyway, uh, there was this band with Sullivan's um, seal and it, it feels really nice. You can feel the, the ink. Anyway, with the band and then this very traditional uh, packaging paper also with the a picture and lettering that he cut himself and yeah this is a restoration of a Budapest tarot and you can check some details on Sullivan's uh, homepage but I will also show you there is there are some introduction cards and there are, uh, they are here in two languages so there is uh, the French one so if you prefer French, you can pause now and read it. <laughs> and if you prefer English, for English, press one. The deck is one of the oldest that we have uh, preserved. And um, it's from somewhere in Italy, uh, possibly uh, Venice or Ferrara. And it's... Uh, probably from somewhere between 15, the end of 15th century and beginning of the 16th. And um, yeah, this tarot deck is a reconstruction of one of the oldest printed tarots. The original documents are uncut sheets, partially incomplete, situated in different museums and private collections. Fortunately, these sheets complement one another and it is possible to recompose all the 22 trumps and the major part of the 78 card deck. The restoration work took the direction of the closest redrawing of the original line drawing. Uh, as some of the sheets were stencil colored, the final rendering respects as far as possible the aspect and forms observable on the source documents. The attention to the finest details during all the elaboration process made this tarot extremely close to its original model. The envelope wrapping your tarot is an original creation and a hand-printed linen cut um, inspired by this fascinating and particular style. So yeah. Um, oh yeah, for this first limited edition, each deck is numbered and signed from 1 to 250 on the envelope and on an additional card. So yeah, exciting! I do have another deck by uh, restored by Sullivan and it's uh, the uh, Rosenwald Tarot and I have, I have a review of that deck as well. Just so to remind you, it's a gorgeous deck. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, a bit smaller. So, yeah, this, this is the Budapest and this is the Rosenwald, so it's, the Budapest is a bit bigger. And yeah, this is the, the Rosenwald. Yeah. Let's get into it. So there are those cards. These are the backs. Pretty simple. And yeah. Uh, there are some, you know, irregularities of the paper shown, and they are pretty thick and very nice to detach. 
I like them. They are not very glossy, but a little bit. They have pointy uh, corners. And what we have here is the list of uh, Major Arcana because the numbers here, the order is very different to what uh, we are used to in modern tarot decks. So this is the numbering we get. But I will be showing you the deck in the, the order that, uh, yeah, that we use now in modern tarot decks because it's, you know, just more convenient. Anyway, uh, presentation card signed by Sullivan with a number uh, of which copy it is. And this one as well. So yeah, let us start. We have the Fool. Look at him. So yeah, uh, there are no names for, um, for, for the Majors. Only numbers, but the Fool, as usual in traditional decks, has no number. And the colors are uh, the cream of the paper, the black of the line, uh, line art and yellow and this deep deep red beautiful red and beautiful yellow there are I, th I believe two cards that have some blue in them but only two and you will see them so yeah that's the full <laughs> yeah this is a deck of cross-eyed people <laughs> i won't pretend it's not because it totally is and this reminds me of some uh, old decks that you have uh, spectators uh, looking at uh, what the magician is doing and also about the cross eyes uh, cross eyed people they remind me of uh, <laughs> japanese uh, pictures from uh, edo period when uh, there were portraits of kabuki actors and they would you know they would pause in this Mm. They would um, freeze in a like really magnificent pose, and to make a bigger impression, they would go cross-eyed, and that's why they would be portrayed very often <laughs> like this. So they're just my thing. Anyway, so yeah, you see, uh, the magician is number one, but then uh, the papess, that is usually number two, is number three here. So you can see her and she has keys here and this, uh, I forget what's it called in English, but you know what the Pope usually carries, the staff. Then there is the Empress and she is number two. And she has the shield with the, it's the two headed eagle and the globe and the staff as well. Then the emperor, number four, the same, with an eagle with two heads. Then the pope, what does this say? Yeah, it says, well, it's this weird, weird kind of a mark, but Supposedly, <laughs> it means five. And there are two keys. And there are those little disciples. Again, I have my J Japanese connotations here, like, popping in my head because they look like uh, those Shinto shrine priestesses for me in those red uh, skirts and <laughs> white shirts. I'm sorry. That's just what, how I am. <laughs> Yeah, and there is some lettering here, and actually, it for me, it looks a bit like it could go this way. So it's like a mirror reflection, because it's P-O, P -O, then looks like an A, but could be a P as well. Something like Papa, like Pope, but not exactly. <laughs> and as you can see, he has 
Wait a minute. Yeah, he has a building behind him, supposedly church. And the Empress has maybe a palace. But yeah, they are kind of... See? They, they are kind of a couple. Even though it's the Empress and the Pope. And... And they look a bit the same too. Because they don't have... Well, he has some kind of a curtain. And the Papess doesn't. Even though in later decks she usually has some curtains here. But anyway, it's very interesting to look for uh, similarities and connections between cards. It's fun. Well, at least to me. Then we get one of my favorite cards in the deck, which is the Lover. And it's number eight here. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just look at his face. He's so... Oh my goodness. And she's like probably unable to resist because she just got this hour arrow from the Cupid. So she's like, oh my God, oh my God, I can't resist you. And he's like, yay, baby. <laughs> and then uh, number seven. And it's the chariot. It actually has number seven. And, and as we talked, Kasia and me, um, it looks like there's like Holy Communion. And this looks a bit like a chalice. So I got reminded of uh, the Ace of Cups actually here. And look at the horses. I mean, how modern is that? Awesome. It's awesome. And all those happy pe people inside this, this cup or chariot or whatever it is. There is some kind of a winged creature similar to the one from Wheel of Fortune. So it's a very fascinating uh, imaginary here. And here we have uh, one of the cards that have has uh, blue in it. And it looks gorgeous. It's this um, sky blue, this cerule ceruleum. Oh goodness, I cannot pronounce. But you know what I mean. Sky blue, uh, light blue with those deep reds and um, bright yellows looks gorgeous and she has number 20 here so interesting then we get um, the hermit he is facing a different direction and what does it say here on this in this where is the hermit it's probably this one, I suppose. El Goppo. What it means? Maybe it means uh, because in some decks he's called the uh, Hunchback. So maybe it's that, but I don't know. I don't know Italian enough. <laughs> and so he's number 11 here. And as I said in the first impressions video, he looks a bit Assyrian for me in this in this uh, outfit. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, uh, a pretty classical depiction here. Then we get the Wheel of Fortune. And it's a very interesting card because it seems very busy. Uh, we get those words of uh, I reigned, I will reign, I reign. <laughs> and Inero? I don't know. Not sure what it means. But possibly I, I'm somewhere powerless now. Just my suspicion. Then we get strength at number nine. And it's a man... Um, well, fighting a lion, but the lion seems pretty, you know, bored with with everything. And the man is smiling, so maybe they are just playing. Who knows? Then the hanged man is 12. And yeah, as usual, uh, as usual, he often has his hand behind his back. And he is totally cross-eyed. Oh, yeah. Then um, the death card, number 13. And again, look, 
it could be a modern art, really. This horse here, this skeleton, all those lines, they're just... Yeah. <laughs> it could be drawn by some uh, contemporary artist. Really. Modern. Mm, then we get temperance. And here, temperance is number six. And she's seated. And with a crown. Beautiful, beautiful dress. Only one cup is colored, the other is not. You know, there are many interesting details that can come up in the reading and have some significance. Then one of my favorite cards in um, in old decks, in many decks, uh, the devil card uh, got lost or some people even think that it never existed. But yeah, here we have him. And <laughs> he's awesome. <laughs> like, look at those pants! <laughs> and his robes, it's not robes, it's actually like, it might be bat wings, but not necessarily. But he has the pitchfork, which is awesome. <laughs> and then um, the tower, I believe, is number 15 here. And, and and yeah, it's a very classical classical tower without people anywhere, but it's just yeah, it's being hit by some kind of celestial force and it's falling apart. Then um, the star is at sixteen, <laughs> and we we get a guy here, actually. It seems like a guy, but who knows? Yeah. Um, then the moon is at 17. It's 15 plus 2. And it's a guy again in a kind of weird pants. Maybe this one is in pants too, but I don't know. <laughs> so he's holding the moon and there's the face. Then one of my favorite cards is the sun. It's just gorgeous. And it's 18 here. This face, these rays of a sunlight on the trees. Wonderful. Wonderful. I love this card. Then, <laughs> then we get judgment. And it's what, 15... 17, so this is 19 and these people here they totally totally crack me up it's just oh my god oh my god it's modern cartoons people <laughs> and of course a cross-eyed angel with beautiful wings yeah lovely it's really lovely <laughs> hilarious Anyway, uh, then we get the world card. The world is held by an angel. And again, we have the blue here. Just just a little bit. So it's a classical uh, sphere with, with a, well, supposedly a town. Here is the world. Gorgeous. And then we start with the pips. And... We get this, yeah, I I did not remember, I do not remember actually in what order Sullivan put the, the suits. I just, I just put them like this myself to show you. But anyway, I'm starting with the batons or wands and we get a cheetah in the, in the ace. How cool is that? I remember Patrick, um, uh, Patrick Fogarty, uh, really being delighted by a cheetah on on this um, card and so am i it's really cool it's really cool and then we get the pips that are actually in this suit we get the numbers so it's two three so you don't have to count them <laughs> four five Six, seven, 
eight. So it's different, uh, uh, well, a bit different to, to what we know from Tower de Marseille, but it's not that different. It's, it's quite close. Anyway, uh, then we get to 10. Of course, in Tower de Marseille, we don't get the names. <clears throat> <laughs> and then we get the page of wands. This wand is huge. And look at it again, like, uh-uh, huh, I want to tell you something. Now listen. <laughs> then we get this crazy knight who is, I don't know what he's doing, actually, because it's like, this thing looks like it's not a horse. In fact, it looks a bit like a lion. Like, look at the tail and the legs. And then the, this um, lion or horse has a really long neck and a kind of like a dragon-like face. So, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> but it's crazy. Then we get the cross-eyed queen and she's holding the the wand upside down as opposed I mean compared to the page which is interesting maybe I'm now giving you orders and then the proud king but actually his his wand is smaller than hers but he is smaller in general yeah and his pose actually resembles the traditional Terre de Marseille pose, only the wand would be, like, bigger. Then we go to the cups. And this is the ace. Beautiful two of cups. They're so lovely, they are touching each other. It's like, oh... Yeah, yeah, I'm one of those people who see uh, Two of Cups as partnership and love. So, yeah, I like that. Then, <laughs> uh, again, there are so many details here you can, you can read from. Like, these two have those uh, elongated tips, and this one doesn't. So, it's interesting. And the four... So no uh, leaves or flowers around, but still, very beautiful. This is the five, and then in the six we get some kind of like, li lines with patterns going on. Then the seven. So here you see these are closed, they have lids over them and these are opened and this one is closed. So again, in a reading, it can have a meaning to you. Now a sip of something, because my throat is getting dry. And then we proceed with the open cups, more open cups. And yeah, this arrangement is different to classical Terre de Marseille. In Terre de Marseille, you would have those nine plus one on, like, on the top like this. But anyway, this is the ten. And then we go to this guy. I love him. Look at him. It's He's a page of cups and he's drinking from the cup and he's very happy about it. It's like, la 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 la, having fun. And he's either carrying something on, or playing bagpipes, something like that. He's a musician, maybe? He has something weird here, too. So it's an interesting card. I love him. Then there is a romantic uh, Knight of Cups. And his horse is also a bit, like, dragon-like here. Yeah, but look at him. Wow. Then the queen who has a huge cup and boobs. See? <laughs> and then there's the king. So as opposed to Tara de Marseille, he is actually beardless. 
and I saw in many like older decks the kings um, all of the kings are pretty young for being a king but then if we think of the times there were times that people tended to like poison each other all the time so <laughs> many people became kings or, or princes uh, really young so maybe that's why or maybe beards are, were not in fashion. What do I know? So this is a beautiful um, ace of coins here with those leaves. And two of coins. Without the Tower de Marseille uh, ribbon here. But yeah, it has something different. Three of coins. Four, five, six. The arrangement is the same as in Tower de Marseille, so it looks familiar. <laughs> and seven, eight, nine, and ten. Then, this is intriguing. I believe this is the only page in this deck that is female. Well, we can see it's a woman. She's in a dress. She has breasts. Uh, yeah, the only one. It's not like um, in some decks you would get for cups and coins. You would get women and for swords and wands you would get men. Here, only the coin lady uh, is page. Yeah. Then we get the Knight of Coins, and he has two coins. It's interesting. And the horse, look at the face of the horse. It's like, oh, what's up, man? I'm so bored. <laughs> and then the Queen, who's very happy with her coin. Look, I'm so satisfied. Yay. And again, a beardless king. Just like in Visconti Sforza, we don't get bearded kings. So yeah. Then lastly, swords. And here, so here we have the connection between swords and uh, wands. Because the, uh, in the, the aces, because there are animals holding the object. So here there is a lion at the Ace of Swords. And then, well, yeah, this is interesting. In Tower de Marseille, we get also curved swords, but they are like this. And here they are the opposite. So that's interesting. But uh, it's also easy to tell whether it's, it's a wand card or... Where was wands? Whether it's a wand card or a sword card, because the wands, just like in Tower de Marseille, are straight, and the swords are curved. So it's a two, and it and yeah, and they have a crown, have a crown, and these have ribbons. There's a three, four, five. Yeah, and then they added them on the top for the six. Then it's seven, eight, nine. It's really getting crowded here right now. And finally the ten. And then we get a pissed off page of swords. Like he's serious. And he's old, by the way. He has a beard. And it looks like a little bit he might be he might be wearing a lion skin like Hercules, you know? And now yeah, that poor lion from the Ace of Swords, it all matches. Mm. Then the Knight of Swords <laughs> who is pretty, you know, I'm going into battle and the horse is like whatever. <laughs> Very calm. And yeah, standing, not running. 
But um, yeah, I like that the Knight of Swords is actually uh, hidden. His face is hidden and he's more, uh, you know, distant and dangerous. Then there's the Queen. And lastly, the Beardless King. So yeah, this is the Budapest Tarot, a great, beautiful deck restored with wonderful uh, skill and care uh, by Sullivan Hismans. Um, if you're interested in this deck, uh, check out his webpage. You can order directly from him. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have any questions, as usual, please ask me. If you've enjoyed, please like, leave a comment. Let me know you liked the video or just thumbs up. It always uh, makes me happy. So, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I wish you a nice day. Bye.